I can never get my hair straight. It really pisses me off. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name's Courtney, you can call me Quartz, and I am an actor, writer, director, filmmaker, content creator. But if you clicked on this video, that probably means that you are too. I literally had to go fix my hair because I didn't want to look bald in this video. Anyway, right, so if you made it to this video, you are probably a actor, writer, director looking to launch your film career. And I am much more of a hands-on learner, so working as a production assistant is probably the easiest way for anybody beginning to start. I would appreciate it if you liked this video, subscribe to my channel, I'm a growing creator, and I have a dream that one day this channel will be a way for me to fund my own short film. Yeah, give us a like, give us a subscribe. And if you are new here, I have another video on how to become a background actor if that's more your jam. Okay, disclaimer, I am Canadian, so I work out of Vancouver, aka Hollywood North. It really is the north of the Hollywood though, yeah it is, eh? Alright. So in this video, we're gonna discuss how to find your first production assistant gig, everything that you need to do to be prepared for your first day and eventually launch your successful film career. Another thing we also need to know, there are kind of two different worlds in film. We have the commercial world and we have the film and television world. Film and television is unionized. However, mate, commercials do not have a union. Commercials don't have a union because it's contract work and you're often working for only a weekend or like seven days at max at a time. You're never really shooting a commercial more than a week. Unless it's something like Crazy Wild, I, I don't know. But that is the reason why they aren't unionized. Trying to get into the Director's Guild if you're trying to work on feature films, commercials might be a complete waste of your time, but at the same time, it's the perfect place to start. And we just wrapped a commercial that shot for seven days and um, unfortunately because of that, I won't see my paycheck for three weeks ish so when you're not union they basically have to wait for the production to completely wrap before they can send out all the paychecks however if you're working in film tv you are on a payroll which means you get weekly paychecks which is awesome so yeah if your goal is to just work in film casually and pick up contract work here and there commercials is your world commercials is it but if you're a writer director and you want to go big and create your own projects, then you're gonna wanna find those film and TV opportunities that will get you day to lead into your union membership. The Directors Guild of Canada has a list of productions um, shooting in different areas in the country. So no matter where you are, you can check out the production list on their website. It doesn't mean Directors Guild of Canada, you are a director. Directors Guild of Canada just covers all of the teams involved in TV and film production. So if you're in lighting, if you're in art, if you're in costumes, if you're in hair and makeup, you are also covered under the Directors Guild. So my understanding is to get into the Directors Guild and be unionized, you just need to work 30 days. You just need to have proof of 30 days of work and then you are eligible to apply to the union. And if you're very green to the industry, it really is all about who you know. I had a friend of a friend who works as an assistant director and she had kept pawning me off jobs and I wasn't able to take them because at the time I was working corporate. Because I knew her, I was able to instantly be connected with people looking to hire production assistants. Also, I was able to apply into uh, the Facebook group here in Vancouver called Crew Packs, which is where most of our film professionals post jobs or um, union information. There's also an app now where you can manage your schedule and post your availability. But I've been solely relying on the Facebook group Crew Packs for Vancouver. You can also visit the Creative BC website, which I'm pretty certain there is another list of productions running. If you have the right information and you're brave enough, you can reach out to some of those contacts or the production managers on those lists, send them an email, a professional email saying, hi, I'm looking to join um, a production as a production assistant. I'm very new, but I'm eager to learn, yada, yada, yada. They'll almost always take you on if you say you're eager to learn. and if you're willing to bring a positive attitude. It really is all about who you know. I'm also gonna try and look up some resources for Toronto and the United States. So if you're watching this from Toronto the US, check the description box because I'm leaving loads of links in there. Okay, let's move it on. Once you're hired on as a production assistant, any department from locations to the actual production team. Me, I started in locations, which is truly the bitchest work of the bitchest work. You as a bitch. <laughs> but you're happy about it. But it is an amazing opportunity to be in a position amongst all of these amazing people who are already established in the industry. You've landed the gig. You're about to receive your first 
call sheet. Before production, you might have to take a COVID test, but they always pay you for this, and it's usually like five minutes of your time, the quickest $100 I ever made. Finally, it's the night before production, and you're receiving your first call sheet. The call sheet can come in anytime in that evening before production. So make sure you're ready to check your phone. The only thing that you really need to pay attention to, depending on which department you're on, is the call time. What time you need to be there in the morning. Unfortunately, this is always a last minute thing, so it's something that you're gonna have to get used to if you wanna be in the film industry. All right, the most important part is the top right corner of the call sheet. A general crew call at the top, which is the general time that everybody needs to be at work. It will also list the time that they're serving breakfast, or lunch depending on if it's a day or night shoot. But if you scroll down to your department, you can see your name. And it'll have everyone else you're working with that day. And it'll also have your personal call time. So on my call sheet, it says on set per JH, which is our manager. So we basically needed to hear from him directly to tell us when we needed to be at work. I know it seems stressful now, but it really, it really comes together quite smoothly. So that is the basics of the call sheet. You have the general crew call, and then you have maybe a separate time depending on your department. So let's talk about how to be a success on set. A tip I received in acting school was to always Always, 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 always arrive 10 to 15 minutes early. And this is for you mostly, in case you're running late or you decide you want to stop for a coffee or there's a long line at a coffee shop, yada, 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 things happen. A lot of the times you're shooting on location in the middle of nowhere and it's easy to get lost or Google Maps takes you the wrong way or you just can't find the two set sign. Plan to show up. 15 to 10 minutes early at least. Another thing that is gonna make you very successful is asking loads of questions. I need you to know that it's so okay to ask loads and loads of questions, especially if you don't know. Because for me, working as a PA is hands-on learning experience. But the most important questions that you should be asking, especially as a PA, what can I be doing? Is there anything that needs to get done? Do you need anything from me? If you're constantly asking your manager this question, you're good. And like, don't be annoying, but you know. To launch a successful film career, you are gonna wanna stick out from the crowd because everybody on set thinks they're a director or writer the next Spielberg. So you need to show everyone there that you really are hardworking and you really are dedicated because you love what you do. Next thing to make you successful, always chat with the other departments. I'm a social person, you might be a little bit more socially awkward or socially anxious, but just know that it's okay and lots of other people are in the same position as you. But if you're in line for food or you're hanging out somewhere, chat people up, be like, what department are you in? How long have you been doing this? It's my first day. Play that card as much as you can because people are gonna wanna tell you all of their advice and they're gonna wanna connect with you. This is also how you get out of being a PA forever. If you talk to people and you connect with them and you genuinely get along, they're gonna invite you to their department. They're gonna say, hey, reach out to my boss. We need a new guy this week. And the next thing you know, you've gone from PAing to working in the art department. And again, because this industry is all about who you know, it doesn't hurt to make friends on set. Now, one of the most important tips to be successful. When you're on these big productions, you get a radio. So it's super important to have good communication skills, communicating often, communicating eloquently, communicating without emotion if you can. People get stressed and tense on set all the time, so it's better to just hold your ground, communicate what you need, and know exactly how to do that. So let's talk about the radios. It's so important that you pay attention to your radio, even if you're like not doing anything important. If you're constantly listening to your radio, you might pick up on something that someone else missed. You might be the guy who comes in and saves the day. And it's gonna help you learn. Like I said, this is free film school. It's a paid way to learn how sets function. So if you're listening to your radio constantly, you're gonna understand perfectly what's going on at all times. As for some radio lingo, if, it's really, if it really is your first day and you have no idea, you've never used the radio before, it can be a little intimidating. I have a link in the description with a very simple article stating some of the radio lingo on set as well as radio etiquette if you wanna take it a read. Take it a read. Take a read of it. 
Time to hydrate. Uh. Lastly, I just want to touch on prep wrap shoe scenarios because I've never prepped a shoe before and I'd also never wrapped a shoe before, but a lot of the times the locations, PAs are responsible to prep the location and then clear everything out of the location at the end of the shoot. You kick ass, you listen to your radio, you're proactive, you stick out from the crowd, you have a positive attitude, you slay the shoot, prep, shoot, wrap. Very simple. The reason why I wanted to bring up the prep day, sometimes there's no craft to your catering, so pro tip to bring your own lunch. This is something that I would not have thought of. There's not always crafty on those prep days, especially not on those wrap days. So make sure you ask your superior if you need to be prepared and bring your own food for those days. Otherwise, there's always amazing snacks and food on set. You can just eat endlessly, constantly, and it's excellent. The last thing that you're gonna need to worry about at the end of the wrap, if you're on a commercial shoot, you're gonna need to send an invoice. And I just like you was very intimidated by this very thought of trying to invoice someone I've never done that before but luckily for me I met someone on set who had an excellent invoice tool the app is called wave apps it's also a website I use the website it's very simple and remember this is only necessary if you work on a commercial project because it's not union and therefore it isn't on a payroll so the only scenario you need to create an invoice for is if you are on a commercial in which case you'd use something like wave or wave apps which isn't sponsored but should be. It's really straightforward. All you do is punch in your day's work to your flat rate. And for us, PAs here in BC, our daily rate is $315 a day. So you basically type that in for how many days you worked. It creates a beautiful invoice for you seamlessly. It's so easy. Email it off to the head of production and bam cham lam, you're making sure that you get paid. The easiest way you can create an invoice is with Wave Apps and it's what I use, it's what I'll continue to use. So, check it out. For all your business bitch needs. <laughs> Man, oh man, but in a nutshell, that is how to successfully launch your career in film as a production assistant. How to be a successful production assistant is what I should have titled this video, but Google SEO said no. Anyways, thank you so much for sitting through this video. Thank you so much for stopping by my channel. Check out that background acting video if you're interested. Please let me know in the comments if there's any other questions you may have, if there's any other resources that I might have missed. And as always, I love hearing from you guys. So thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Oh, fun announcement. Okay. Up until this point as a content creator, I've just been posting whatever brings me joy, whatever makes me feel good, which is excellent because it taught me so many things about creating content. But now I've like kind of settled up with the fact that I do need to niche down a bit in order to succeed on YouTube. As of the next video, I am going to be posting little movie reviews, kind of just testing those waters to see how it goes. Otherwise, everything on my channel will be for the most part movie themed so if you're an independent filmmaker an actor a writer please stick around because there's going to be so much fun film content and i'll be taking you on my own personal film journey which i'm so excited for next week we are talking about olivia wilde as a female director we're going to be reviewing booksmart so yeah no spoilers but i haven't seen it yet and i'm eager to watch it i definitely need to cross it off my list before don't worry darling comes out if you know you know stick around i can't wait to have you thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one bye